So again, this is a great turnout. Thank you very much uh, for taking time out of your personal schedule, academic schedule. Um, this shows your, your dedication to a lot of things, athletics, academics, and, and just trying to make yourself better. And, and I personally appreciate it. I know the department appreciates it. Okay. Um, you know, it also shows that we all know the importance of mental health and moving forward. Right? We had meetings today, actually, for the conference uh, athletic trainers, and it's a, it's a, it's known now. I don't want to say more than ever, but not only in keeping us to the best wellness that we can have, but also in athletic performance and and things like that. So um, I just want to say thank you. You know, it's. Uh, it's been a trying semester across our conference. Um, there have been some tragedies along the way. So, you know, that's, that makes this even closer to heart for all of us. I think, you know, we've all been touched by something in the last two to three months, even within the last, you know, seven days. So, um, thank you very much. It means a lot to all of us. Um, a couple more thank yous that, that I just want to throw out there before we get going for this talk. Uh, definitely to, you know, the Department of Athletics, uh, Fitness and Recreation, uh, Joe McCartney, Kelly Ryan, who, that we've kind of all pulled together to get a lot of things for this to happen uh, in order to try and do as much as we could. Our Health and Counseling Center has been integral in this. Uh, Chris Smith, Libby Ladrick um, has been a lot for us. You know, in talking with our peers today and our colleagues at the meetings, uh, not many have someone like Libby at their college that is not necessarily dedicated to athletics, but a true point person. So if there's some, if you have a question, who can I talk to? We've always got a name, a business card that we can give you and we're confident that, that they have experience with athletes and it should be relatable for what, what you're looking for. Um, and then lastly, uh, I want to put a special thank you out to Ohio Health. Uh, the agreement that we have with Ohio Health has, has helped us along the way for a number of things, whether that's having our team position. Um, I think a lot of you know who JT is. Without the Ohio Health agreement, we wouldn't have JT on this campus at all. Um, and he does more than just makes nine parts of training and he you know, helps a lot of athletes. He helps a number of non-athletes. Uh, those long-term rehabs that unfortunately are necessary uh, with JT there, we can dedicate that 45 minutes to an hour to get you good care. Uh, if that was left to myself and the assistant athletic trainers, we, we get pulled away pretty often. Some of you have seen that, so I want to put a big thank you out to Ohio Health. Um, with us today, we have Dr. Todd Case. Uh, Dr. Case has been doing this for a long time. He is a, let me look at my notes here, he's a sports psychologist and mental coach. Um, he is the president of the Athletic Mind Institute, and it's, their whole goal is to, they want the mind to help and not hinder um, across many facets, athletic performance being one of them. Uh, Dr. Case is the co-author of a number of books, including Sports Psychology for Dummies, so that's something that you and I could read. Um, he's the co-author of the Athlete's Journal, the Golfer's Journal, um, and another book called The Parents' Playbook. Uh, he's been an adjunct professor at the Ohio State University. He has consulted with a number of universities and professional sports, including Columbus Crew. Uh, he's had athletes from the NFL, Major League Baseball, uh, PGA, LPGA, um, and the United Tennis Association. He's more recently been working with one of our colleagues' schools at Ohio Wesson, and they've seen very good uh, turnouts and very good results. It's been very impactful to have him on the campus and be able to interact with, with student athletes, with students, to get a good message across that, so that we realize that, you know, mental health is important, but it's, it can contribute to a number of things in your performance, including on the field and off the field. So, uh, again, if you have an AT to get to or anything like that, please feel free to go and do that. And, you know, we can, we can visit a little bit later. We are actually filming this so that we can uh, provide it to some of your classmates or teammates that weren't able to come tonight. So if you need to, you're concerned about that last 15 to 20 minutes, just talk to your coach and let us know, and then we can, we can get you built into that and that showing. So here's Dr. Todd Case. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, I'm going to come down here. It feels more comfortable to me. Um, that way I can get you to volunteer for things. All right. Okay. Um, I, I want to thank Mark and, and the, 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 you know, staff here for putting, you know, a lot of work goes on behind the scenes to just bring a speaker in or somebody uh, from the outside. So I want to certainly thank them 
because they've done a, a bang up job here to get um, all this organized. And a um, little competition, um, you guys had a lot better turnout than Owu, so. <laughs> But I didn't say that, all right. Okay, so, oh, that's right, it's on video. I gotta watch myself, all right. Okay, um, how many have been exposed to uh, sports psychology? Okay, good. What do you guys know about it? Just anything. Just shout, raise your hand, put, you know, just shout things out. What, what have you heard about sports psychology? Performance psychology. I saw about half of you raise your hand, so come on. It's really helpful. Okay. Some athletes. That's what you've heard or experienced it? Working with a sports psychologist, not personal. Okay. All right. So it's maybe helpful. All right. What else? Man, I've really got to prove myself tonight. What else? I mean, from my experience, a lot more of what I learned was more preparation and meditation versus what I expected it to be. Like, uh, I had no expectations and turn out like a lot of what I was learning was to prepare rather than to like really think about in a game. Okay. Like what you do before, not what you do during a game. Absolutely. Good, good. Great preparation. And, and that's simply you prepare your skill, so why wouldn't you prepare your mind? So great. That's a great one. Okay, others. How about a couple others? Yeah. Wow, you're using big words back there. Yeah. I only wrote sports psychology for dummies, so. Um, all right, what's intrinsic motivation? Okay, very good. Wow, very sophisticated. One more. One more. Part of, uh, you know, part of being successful in anything you do? Risk taking. So as I say that, one more volunteer. Take a risk. You won't regret it. Get out of their own way? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So. How many have heard, maybe in high school, maybe in your career here at Kenyon, just focus. You can do this. Maybe from your parents, maybe from your coaches, maybe from your teammates. How many have heard that before? Okay. What about have confidence? You got this. Okay. What about just relax. It's all good. Okay. So, does everybody know how to do it? Okay. So therein lies the problem. Therein lies the problem. Because next time somebody says that to you, if they say, just relax, you got this. Just ask them politely, respectfully, can you show me how? You might get some blank stares. Okay? You might get some blank stares. All right? Okay, so what we're going to talk about tonight, one of the things I want you to understand is, you know, performance penetrates everything we do in life. Okay, as a student athlete, you obviously have athletic performance, you have academic performance. Believe it or not, you have relationship performance. When you go for job interviews, that's a performance. When you apply to graduate schools, that's a performance. So everything you do in your life is going to be some level of a performance. Now, you prepare yourself in the classroom academically, right? For whatever your major might be. 
Okay? You prepare your skill in whatever sport. Okay? In sport, I understand, uh, the, I see the strength and conditioning coach was introduced to me or pointed out to me. Uh, um, it's going to help. It's going to help train your bodies. Fuel your bodies correctly, right? Okay, take care of your bodies. Now what ultimately, how many have ever been in this situation? You're fit, fueling's good, great practice, feel like the skill's there, but then you lay an egg in performance. How many have been there? I certainly have. Okay. So you have the skill, you have the fitness, but somehow you didn't perform. Why is that? Why is that? Your brain? Okay. Is it your brain or is it your mind? <laughs> you guys are blaming it on the brain, just uh, playing the victim. It's my brain, it's not my mind, it's not me. All right, all right, let me ask you three questions, okay? So tonight, I want you to have a better understanding, okay, that what I do and what I'm passionate about and what I've done for the last 25 years is like Mark said, I want your mind and your heart, believe it or not, to improve your performance, not get in the way, not know that I've had great practices, I've, my body feels great, Ooh, I don't perform, okay? That's what I do, whether it be in the classroom, whether it be you're battling, okay. How many are stressed right now? Let me just ask that. How many are stressed right now? Okay, that's, a, that's at least, well, three quarters maybe. Okay. How many would consider themselves a perfectionist in here? Okay. Do you know, do you know that's why you're stressed, don't you? All right. But perfectionism is a tough thing, all right? We need perfectionism. I certainly would like perfectionism because if I'm getting on a plane and they're not perfect in preparing the plane mechanically, somebody could die. Planes go down. So yes, I want the airlines to be perfect, okay? If you go into a surgery, you certainly want the surgeon, the medical team, to be perfect, right? Because I'd assume most of us don't have a death wish. All right? So, but at the same time, that works against you. Because it stresses you out, okay? And in terms of, you know, your school, I've worked with numerous individual student athletes over the years from Kenyon. Your high achievers, okay, perfectionists, want to do well academically, want to do well athletically. At the same time, which is awesome, at the same time, you're very uptight and very anxious and very stressed a lot of time. Is that accurate? I mean, that's just with my history with Kenyan student athletes that I've worked with over the years, all right? Is that a, an enjoyable existence? All right? Probably not, and it wasn't for me. Now, today it's very different. You guys are better athletes, you're smarter, okay? There is a culture that we're living in that Standards are this high, because in order to even get in this school or many other schools, okay, you have to be top-notch, 
And so it's, it used to be, when I started in this field, it used to be eh, juniors, seniors in high school would start getting a little stressed. Now it's sixth and seventh graders because they're already thinking about in order for me to get into college to compete at the college level, in order for me to academically get to, into this school, everybody's wound so tight, okay? And the other phenomenon we're in, and I'm all about technology. I have technology that I can tell you what you're thinking on the athletic realm. I can tell you. I can tell you exactly by an app on my phone and a band around your head. Okay? I use it a lot to help performance. So I'm all about technology, but too much technology, what happens is that we don't develop the emotional mental pieces. Okay? Because we end to our phones. Okay? Goods and bads to everything. But that's kind of where sometimes I see sometimes the blocks that you guys run into. All right? But know that there are ways to overcome this. Know that there are ways to begin to deal with this. All right? And that's what I love teaching, working, okay? and I try to you know, uh, do it you know, as, as best to my ability. Not perfect, but certainly you know, hopefully death is not on the line. All right. All right, so if we can move to the next slide. What percentage of your sport is mental? Just give me some examples, give me some guesses. 95%. 95? 70? 50? 50? What else? 50? Another 50? 100? Okay. Swimmers. Who are the swimmers in the room? What percentage of swimming is mental? 90? Setting me up. Thank you. All right. How many would agree? I'll just be, how many would agree that at least 50% of your sport is mental? Let's just say that. Let's just kind of be conservative. Okay. All right. Um, now, a little self reflection here. What percentage of the mistakes you make in your sport, an example of a mental mistake, lack of preparation, distracted because you're on the field? in practice, and you're thinking about, holy crap, I've got a 13-page paper to finish tonight, okay? Or I got two exams tomorrow, or, you know, I've got, I'm graduating this year, and I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? You're thinking about that, okay? Not prepared, pressure, gets to you, okay, so you're thinking about, instead of in, engaged in the process of getting better, engaged in the process of executing skill, you're thinking about, oh crap, my coach saw that, oh, I gotta get benched, you know, my parents are gonna kill me, I lost my starting position, you're thinking about all that stuff, kind of hard to compete to your best when you got all that stuff rattling around your head. So those are examples of mental mistakes. What percentage of your mistakes are more mental as opposed to physical or skill? Give me, give me some ideas. 10, 90, 50 again. What do you guys think? I heard a 90, yeah? 90? What's that? 50? You're 50-50 again. I got you. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Some other. 93. Very good. You a math major? All right. <laughs> okay. How many would say, let's just go conservative. How many would say it's a, at least 50% of the mistakes you make in your sport are mental mistakes? Okay. They're not skill like 
you know, you just don't know how, you don't have the skill. Okay, so at least 50%, okay, most of you said that, okay. So if a lot of your sport, if about 50% or more is mental, and then at least 50% or more of your mistakes are mental, what percentage of time, this is the final question, what percentage of time do you spend training, preparing your mind? Zero. Okay. You guys are smart. That probably is not a good formula, right? How many, what percentage? I got a zero percent. Ten percent. Okay. What about others? Forty. How many of you guys think about and imagine in your mind the competition, an upcoming competition? You go over it in your mind. That's mental training. Okay? How many of you breathe to help yourself relax? Well, you all breathe because you wouldn't be talking to me. <laughs> See, I told you I wrote sports psychology for dummies. Okay? You guys are doing things you're probably not doing them as effectively as you could because nobody has taught you how. Okay? That's what I've spent the last 25 years doing. Okay? There's lots of books. There's lots of podcasts. Okay? There's lots of videos. All that stuff is great. Okay? But we got to bring this down, just like your strength and conditioning coach is going to watch you perform lifts that you've been doing probably for the last four to eight years, right? But you've got to do them correctly, okay? One, because if you don't, you might get injured, okay? And you've got to know exactly, that's why you have strength and conditioning coaches, because they can make sure you're doing things the right way. It seems simple, we'll just lift. It's a lot more complex than that, and you guys know that. Okay? Skill. You guys drill over and over and over and over. Okay. What if you actually knew how to do that with your mind? Do you think you would perform better? I think your teams would be more consistent. You would have better records personally and as a team because that's the component that we're missing. And that's also going to hinder you in your preparation for in exams where their stress level is. Perfectionism gets in our way because you are worried in your head about everything that's coming up. And let's say 30% of your mind is just racing about what am I going to get on this test? What am I going to get in this class? Am I going to get an A? Am I going to get a B? Am I going to pass? All of that stuff. What are you not focused on? The material right in front of you. So if you study with the 70% focus level, how are you going to perform? Probably 70%. If you bring 70% of your mind into training week after week, how are you going to perform athletically? Probably 70%. Now. 70% is a C. You, some student athletes are like, awesome, a C, yes. Okay, I don't think that's a whole lot of you in this crowd right here. Okay, and so you have the knowledge, you have the skill, but then, ah, that mind starts racing. Okay, all right. Your mind, and believe it or not, I'm going to talk just a little bit, your heart. There are muscles that can be trained. You would never show up, you know, when you guys show up in the fall, or you guys go home for the break, come back and you say, or, you know, in the next year, you come back and it's like, okay, whatever, August 1st, August 15th, whenever you might get in, you're like, you know, probably a good idea, huh, I'm starting the season, probably a good idea if I pick up a soccer ball now. You guys are going to do that, right? You're going to play throughout the summer. You're going to train throughout the summer. Okay? It's the same thing with the mind. 
You got to train it. Now, here's the thing. It's not two hours a day. It's not three hours a day. How long do you think it is? What's that? All day. You'd be exhausted. So I'm not here to add more work for you, okay? 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. If I told you that if you give yourself the opportunity for 15 minutes a day, would you do it? That could change your entire course of your athletic and academic and career life. Would you guys do it? That's what it is. I've, I've had the fortune to work with some of the highest level athletes in the world. Okay? And if they're doing it, and they recognize that this muscle is what's hindering or hurting or helping, if they're doing it, then why wouldn't we want to learn from them? Okay? And they don't have ownership over this. This is simple things that you can do. 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes the next day. Okay? And then what you begin to learn how to do, and this is what I try to teach coaches, is mind skill training. So when you're in practice, you're actually mentally training. Okay? I'm going to give you a couple different things tonight that makes it real. Things you can do tonight if you choose to. Okay? Now, it's, the mind is different. It works behind the scenes. You just have to trust. Because what you're doing is you get 85% of our days we're in our subconscious. So your subconscious is guiding your whole life. Now, you have to ask yourself, is my subconscious effective or ineffective? Is my subconscious creating a lot of stress because I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to, I should, I should, I should. I can't screw up, I can't screw up, I can't screw up. If that's your subconscious, that's exactly what's going to happen. All right? So we have to consciously retrain our subconsciouses to be effective. But little things behind the scenes. It's working. Okay? So that's what I do. Okay? Because somebody, an, an athlete comes to me, I don't look at they have a problem. I look at they just want to improve their performance somehow. Might be personal, might be athletically. Doesn't matter to me. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. Here's the three legs of the stool. That I, I have a, if we have a stool, okay, all three legs, skill, mind, body. Which is the weakest, do you think? Come on, give me some love here. What do you think the weakest is? All right, thank you. All right, the mind is. Why? We just talked about that. Because <laughs> nobody has really formally taught you to really maximize this muscle. Okay? It's nobody's fault. Sports psychology is still in its infancy. We didn't have the first sports psychologist at our Olympics until 1988 in Seoul, Korea. So I know you guys weren't born, but that was 40 years ago. That's really not that old. Okay? But we keep developing, and just know that this is available to you if you choose to apply and practice it. Okay? There you go. If you have one of these legs, that's wobbly, it's going to be hard to sit down. You're not going to be competing on a firm foundation because that's always going to be a little bit wobbly. Now, but if you add that 15 minutes extra every day, huh? now that leg becomes stable. You're already doing the, mind, the skill in the body because that's easy. We all know how to do it. It's not easy, but that's what we're most familiar with. That's what we've been taught. This is just adding it, and if you don't, you're not complete. You will never reach your potential because attitude determines altitude, as you've heard before. But you've got to train that. That's not easy to do. If I'm a perfectionist, which I am, okay, okay, I've seen my own coach for 15 years because I want to live. I want to be at my best on a consistent basis. Okay? And he's my mental coach. Because 
This is what di dictates how well I do whatever performance I'm doing, this dictates it. Okay? And my heart. All right? So why wouldn't I want to take care of that? Why wouldn't I want to nurture that? Why wouldn't I want to develop and train it? Because I know that this is what's going to get in my way. If I fail, it was this. If I succeed, it was this. Okay? So we have to give some time and effort. You would never think to show up to your first practice having not been fit or not doing whatever your sport is. You come in and it's just like, go. Because you practiced it for years, some of you. But the mind has lagged behind. All right, next one. All right, you all said you're stressed. Here's a simple solution. Win the lottery and move to Bora Bora. Okay, simple as that, right? Okay, now, that wouldn't even make most people happy. The ones who win the lottery, they, they follow them up a year, two years, three years, they're not any happier than they were before they won the lottery. Might have things a little bit easier, but they're not any happier. Okay, so that means it's nothing external, it's in us. It's inside of us. You have so much power with inside, and that's what I want you to start to learn how to unleash that power, because it's all in you. I don't know what the circumstances in your lives are going to be. Some of you have very stressful circumstances. From an academic standpoint, I know you've got a lot of stuff going on here in the next week. Okay. From an athletic standpoint, okay, some of you have finished the season. You may have had a great season. You may not have. And you're like, how do I get better? Some of you are preparing for your spring seasons already. Okay. So, but that power is within you, but we need to know how to harness that power. Not let perfectionism, not let stress rule us. Okay? That's the key, but we can't just, oh, well, I want to manage stress, so I want to be more focused. All right, what do I do? Things you can do. Now, whether you choose to do them is up to you. All right? But I guarantee it'll make a difference. It will be the completion. Okay. So stress is a reality. It's not a question of if we have stress, it's a question of when and how much. And the question and really what you have in your control is, are you going to spiral up or are you going to spiral down? Because you have that power within you. You may not feel like it, but each of you do. If you get a C on an exam, spiral up or spiral down, up to you. Because I could take a number of you and you'd say, I spiraled up because I'm like, well, at least I know what I need to do the rest of the semester. It's done, over with, I didn't prepare or I did everything I could. I'll try to tighten everything up. Then some are spiraling down. Same exact situation, same seat, the same class, but they spiral down. Where, oh my God, what's gonna happen? I'm never going to have my career that I want. I'm never going to get into graduate school. My parents are going to disown me. I'm going to be working, you know, I'm going to be sweeping out buildings on a construction site for the rest of my life. Okay? That's how our minds work. That's how the, we create these stories. Okay? That there's no basis in truth to most of the stories. It's just that's the way we work. Evolution is part of it. Heck, our brains... We're more negative. Thousands of years ago, it was protection. Might get eaten by an animal. Yeah, I'd be afraid too. But we have that same reaction today when we make a mistake in practice, when we make a mistake in the classroom, we have that same reaction. It's life or death. It's not life or death. But we gotta train it. We gotta train our minds to manage those situations better because they're gonna be around us for the rest of our lives whether it be in the classroom and the athletic field right now, or whether it be in your career, your family, your relationships someday after this. Okay? All right. So here's what I want for you is that top box. I want you to perform to your, your skill level consistently. So, for example, if you have, um, 
you know, uh, how many, any golfers in here? This is always an easy analogy, okay? So you got golfers. So if all week or, you know, for a couple weeks, you know, you're shooting whatever it is. You're shooting 75, 76, okay? Go out and do a practice round on the tournament you're going to play. You shoot 74, 75 if you keep score. And all of a sudden, next day is the tournament. Maybe 36 holes. And you shoot 79, 81, 79. You perform below your skill level. I know you have a skill level because I just saw it. That's where your mind got in the way. That's what blocked your performance. So you perform below your skill level. Okay? That's where the mind comes in. Now, sometimes there's an injury. Sometimes you've tweaked something, but you're still competing. Okay? If we have an injury, that can get in our minds. Okay? We're trying to go at it, but we know if you're a baseball player, and you know when you turn and you got a tweak in your back, you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt, okay? So that's going to distract you, okay? And that's just part of being an athlete. But if you prepare, that's the missing leg, you'll perform to your skill level consistently. That's what I want. Not perfection, consistently, okay? Because as you've heard, what is a... What is a uh, um, what do you call a 300 hitter in the bigs? What do you call a 300 hitter in baseball? What do you call him? A millionaire. So th they only have to get three out of 10 at the play. They only have to get three hits. Millionaire, okay? Millionaire. So, does it need to be perfection? Because that's going to block the process. Okay, next slide. All right, how many, their head most of the time looks more like that on the left? How many of your heads look more like that? Okay. As, as a high achiever, Okay, as a high achiever, okay, I'd like to say that I've licked this one and got this. I've got it under control, but I still bounce into that area sometimes. It's not like, but I know how to manage it, okay, from practice. I've, had, I've got a lot, just a lot more years of experience, that's all, okay? But if you guys can learn this stuff now, man, you're way ahead of where I ever was. I didn't get this until my early 30s, okay? And by that time, what happens in our brains, okay, as children, as when we're young, our brain wiring is like cobwebs. Just go and clean them out. Now at your age, there's thicker wires. My age, it's like these thick cables, okay? It takes a lot longer to undo all the garbage, all right? But you guys have that opportunity right now to start doing some of the little right things 15 minutes a day. Watch where you are in six months. Watch where you are in three months. Watch where you are in three years. Be a different person. Okay? 15 minutes a day. That's it. Okay? All right. Has anybody seen the performance curve? It's not as complicated as it looks. You've seen a normal bell curve. So on the bottom is your emotional arousal, your stress, your anxiety, your worry. Whether it be about a performance in the classroom or out of the on the field. Performance, okay. If you are too low, that means you're not into it. You're lethargic, you don't want to do it. Maybe, sometimes you're physically sick. All right. Well, how are you going to perform? Not real well. Now, 95% of the student athletes I work with, you're on the far right side of the curve. Your mind's racing, just like the previous slide. It's got all kinds of things. I've got this, this, and this to do. I've got all this stuff to do tonight, plus, okay, so somehow I'm supposed to practice right now. Somehow I'm supposed to focus in on this game when I know I have all this other work to do. Okay? And that's a reality. Okay, now, if you practice the mind, again, 15 minutes a day, that doesn't have to be your reality. You can actually teach yourself to be present in practice, present in the game, 
And then, lo and behold, you're present when you study. And what does that mean? Less time studying because you're being more efficient. Okay? It's not about the, the amount of hours. Okay? Because I'll show you, how many think they don't have enough time? You're always like, oh my gosh, I just don't have time to do all this. Okay? I'll show you, if we have time, you have plenty of time. Okay? I'll show you. You have plenty of time. It's not about time. Okay? It's about efficiency. It's about the tasks. Okay? But we have time. All right? We'll come back to that. Okay? So what we want is that in that middle zone, I want a nervous, I want nervousness, but a nervous excitement. But what I find, and I don't know if that's true here, but what I find is most student athletes at the collegiate level are more nervous, fearful, instead of nervous, excited. Okay? How many would say they fall more in the nervous fear? Okay, don't screw up, just, just, you know, sometimes it's to a point where you're like, oh, just keep the ball away from me, just because I don't want to be in the high, I don't want to be, I don't know, okay? That's a more nervous fear where you're already fearful, okay? All right? So what happens, okay, if you're not in that middle of the curve, okay? Tight muscles, rapid heartbeat, shallow breathing, racing thoughts, all right? Can you compete as well that way? Probably not. All right, next slide. Performance drops below skill level because of your mind. If you want your focus point to be in the present moment on what you, the process of executing a skill, you gotta practice that. I wish it were that easy. If, if it were that easy, I wouldn't be here, okay? I would be doing something else, hopefully in like Hawaii, because if I could figure it out, I definitely would be living in Hawaii. But it's not that easy. It's just sheer hard work of the mental muscle. That's it. Okay? But that's what I find is that most people compete from fear as opposed to excitement. You practice, you practice, you practice, and then, holy crap! I got a tournament this weekend. I got a game this weekend. It's like, wait a minute. That should be, I would like it to be the other way around for you. Like, oh, this is like Christmas Day. Oh, practice is done for the week. Let's go. That's what I want for you. But again, if it were that easy, we'd all do it. And I wouldn't have 80% of the people I work with competing from fear as opposed to excitement. So it's not easy, but we can learn to change it 15 minutes a day. Okay. So here's, here's what happens. I'm just going to focus on the, the mind. Whatever's in your mind, that's the subconscious part many times, goes to your brain automatically. Your brain's just an organ. It's going to send it to your body. So if you consciously or subconsciously saying, don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. Oh, I hope the coach didn't see that. I hope the coach didn't see that. That's going to go to your brain. Your brain's going to send it directly to your muscles. Increased heart rate, shallow breathing, tight muscles. You're not going to be able to have fluid athletic performance. Can't. All right. Everybody do, a, do on the, somehow on your, your thigh or the, the little uh, armrest, put your hand straight out on, and put it on a flat surface. Okay. <laughs> put it on the guy's head next to you. All right. Here's what I want you to do. Oh, wow. You guys actually did that. Wow, I can make you guys do a lot of stuff. Empty your wallets out in the front aisle. All right, here's what I want you to do. Keep your hand flat on a surface as best you can. I want you to tighten your arms, tighten your hand as tight as they can be. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is move your pointer finger and your middle finger up and down while you're keeping it tight, as tight as you can. You guys tired? I just want to see how long you would do it. All right, we'll move on to the next point. No, there was a point to that. Keep your hand out there, shake it out, relax it. Okay, put it back down. 
do the same thing with it loose. What's the difference? Faster, quicker, easier? Just think, and you guys just did that because I told you to do it. I put, in, I put something in your mind, you did it, look what happens. Your body follows. Okay? So if you're competing, and again, like if you look at swimming and you're tight, just in your shoulders, just a little bit, that absolutely can slow you down. It might just be the difference of a tenth of a second that you lose by. Could be two or three seconds you just added. Just that. And what was that caused by? Your mind. It wasn't caused by your skill, but your shoulders were a little tight. Where did that come from? Up here somewhere. Okay, up here. So if we learn to train this, our body, remember, whatever's in your mind, it's gonna go to your brain, it's gonna go to your body. Now what we know also is that the heart sends a lot more signals to the brain than we ever realized. And if we can get our heart in a state of coherence, it's sending, um, it's sending muscles to your, it's sending signals to your brain that you're in a positive mood state. Okay, how do we train that? There's a, what's called a biofeedback device. It fits in your pocket with an app. 10 minutes a day. That's it. Just do it. Play the games on it. Put it away. There's your 10 of your 15 minutes right there. You're training your heart to send your sig signals to your brain that are positive. Oh, your brain says, okay, he's, he or she's in a positive mood. Say, all right, what are you going to do? You're going to relax. Oh, you're relaxed. You're having fun. You're light, not cluttered all up here. Mm. You're going to be very fluid in the water. You're going to have much greater, you're going to have less fatigue on the soccer field. Okay? Your concentration, you know, watching the baseball come down, you're going to pick it up much earlier. Okay? Again, just because of that 15 minutes a day. All right, next slide. Just gave you an example. You know, going down the right side, goes to your brain, pressure, stress, worry. It's going to be harder to compete on the right side. On the left side, if your mind's focus point is that, your body will follow. All right? Okay. Can I get a volunteer? Come on up. <laughs> Somehow I think the crowd was expecting this. <laughs> Okay, face, face your classmates, teammates. All right, man, you're tall. I didn't realize you were that tall. Sorry. Move up. All right, put your right arm out. Okay. Okay. Um, because you're so tall here. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, press down on your arm. Okay. You're going to resist. Okay. That's all you're going to do. Don't do it too hard. I don't want to look bad. What's that? All right. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> Where is that strength and conditioning coach? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, put it up again. Now, I want to put an image in your mind. Okay. Okay? Close your eyes so you can absorb the image and not be distracted. All right? I'm gonna, I want you to have your, imagine, just in mind, that your arm is a steel beam. Right here. Okay. I could literally have three of your teammates hanging on your arm, and they couldn't move it. Okay. All right, you got it? Absorb it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna press down, you're gonna resist again. Just the same. Got a shot? Got a shot? One more image. Okay, here we go. One more. Okay. Now I'm gonna put a different image in your mind. Okay, and that image is your arm and shoulder are like a wet spaghetti noodle. <laughs> okay. All right, so just absorb that in your body. Okay? All right, now I'm going to press down. You're going to resist again. <laughs> so what just happened? What just happened? Any, any ideas? It was, uh, it was sports psychology. All right, very good. Very good. Give him a hand. Okay, 
That was a very basic demonstration of mind, brain, body. He didn't have any image in his mind. He's like, except for what is this crazy mental coach doing? That was the first, and it's like, okay, just his sheer strength. Second one, I did not shoot him in the butt with steroids, I promise you, okay? All I did was put the image, steel beam, went to the brain, the body did the rest, okay? Then I put another image, spaghetti noodle, went to the brain, body followed. The thing is, is that our mental training needs to put more steel beams in our minds, because it's not natural. That's where the practice is, and that's where your body will follow. But we got to practice it, okay? It doesn't get better without practicing, okay? If you want to have less stress because of all the pressure you're putting on yourself, because you want to be perfect, if you practice, you can lower that. And if you lower your perfectionism, wow, lo and behold, your performance is going to increase, athletically and academically. And you're just going to be happier. All right, but we got to practice it. Okay, next slide. Not going to that, but there, that's that little biofeedback device. Okay, we'll skip that. Okay, so here's what you practice. You practice your skill, your fitness, equipment, if you have it, mental skills. When it comes to competing though, 24 hours, 48 hours before, your skill is what it is. Your fitness is what it is. Your equipment is what it is. What's the differentiating factor? Mind. And if you've trained that, not just the night before, but all week long, you'll perform. Okay? Because that's the differentiating factor. Everything else is what it is. Okay? But have you trained your mind? Okay? So I work with a lot of goalkeepers in the NHL, MLS, they're in their heads a lot, okay? They're very much in their heads a lot, all right? So the best ones I've ever worked with, they just implement the process every day to simplify everything up here. They're quicker, they're stronger, their endurance, their shape, their sight, and their vision is much better, okay? Not because they're different, it's because they practiced, okay? They practiced. Okay, next. All right, so let's go to the mind gym. All right, next slide. All right, let's make this real, all right? How do you handle adversity? That's something we all have to do in the classroom and in sports. How do you do it? How do you guys bounce back? How many have had a poor performance? How'd you bounce back? Practice better the next day, okay. That's a good one, what else? Give me some other examples of how you bounce back. Perseverance. What is that? <laughs> like bouncing back after you lose. But what did you do? What did you do to practice that? Train harder. When, the next day? The next week. The next week, okay, you trained harder. Okay. Is that easy to do? Not at all. Okay. But it's a skill you can develop. Again, train the mind. This will start to happen. So, one is you got to be aware. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So, here's a simple mental exercise. Okay. And I encourage the coaches, make all your athletes do this. Okay, you've got to prepare, challenging situation is you strike out twice in a game. You miss an open shot on goal. Okay, you add two seconds, three seconds to your time. Okay, you're not, you're trying to do everything you can to break the line up, you're not. Okay, how you react, that's typically how we react Frustration, anger, worry, fear, okay? Fine, that's what we do. 
But we have to learn, and we can learn. It's not that, it's not difficult. We just practice day after day after day. All of a sudden, it becomes automatic part of your subconscious. You just do it. Okay? You don't think about it. You're just like, oh, made a mistake, boom, move on. Okay? But you've got to know how you're going to respond. You've got to plan ahead. Okay? A friend of mine owns a, uh, one of those small you know, commuter planes, or I don't, I don't even know what they're called. But I didn't want to go on the plane with them because I think those things are just very scary. So I didn't want to go on. But he said, no, I want to take you out. All right. I said, okay. First time, yeah, I was frozen stiff because I thought we were going to die the whole time. All right. Second time, I went and watched how he prepares. He went over everything. He knew the weather reports weeks, the whole week he was watching. I didn't know he was doing that. He went over all these little things, and all of a sudden he gets up in the plane. It's like he's having a blast up there. Okay? But he had to do that. There's going to be situations, could happen. He knows exactly what to do. He doesn't have to worry. You plan ahead, you know what you're going to do when you make a mistake, because you will. Boom. Our reaction is typically our first instinct. So, how many like Krispy Kreme donuts? All right. So, Krispy Kreme donuts, you walk into the shop when the warm sign is on, and you walk in and you're like, your reaction is like, oh yeah, there's a little slice of heaven on earth right here, okay? Now, your response, however, is do I eat one or do I eat 24, okay? That response is up to you, but you got to prepare for that. That doesn't just happen. Just like you have to prepare for challenging situations. Right there, you fill out that chart. Okay, that's the first step. You just did mental training. It's as simple as it is. Okay, next slide. Okay, we'll keep going, keep going. Uh, how do you improve? Be intentional. Write in a journal. This is how I'm going to respond when this happens. How many keep a journal here? with their athletics, okay? Guarantee, there's a podcast, I have a lot of podcasts on SoundCloud. Pick them up. Just type my name, they're free, there's, a, I don't know, probably 110 of them, 120 of them, I don't even know. They're all five to seven minutes, okay? There's one on journaling. Why you journal? I know from 25 years of experience that ones, the ath student athletes who journal get better faster because you're keeping on top of it. And I'm not talking again. I'm talking 10 minutes. I'm talking five minutes before practice, five minutes, five minutes at the beginning of practice, five minutes at the end of practice. Okay? I encourage coaches to make journaling a part of practice because you've got to practice the mind. All right? You've got to practice the mind. But if you don't, coaches, just, and you guys know this, if you send your student athletes home and say, do your imagery at night, do your journaling at night, not going to do it. You got too much other things going on. You're going to go home, you're going to study. And they'll say, I'll get to it later. Mm -mm. Do it in practice. Okay, do it in practice. Okay. All right. How many practice with a purpose? Good. Okay. How many have practiced today? What was your purpose? Uh, get through it, do the work. Okay. Get through it, do the work. That's it's not very specific. That means something. What's it mean? Uh, it's not always about being 110%. Uh, sometimes it's just even if you're feeling like uh, not, not on top of your, your game, uh, just doing the work, being consistent about what you can do at that time. Okay. Who else practiced? What was your purpose? Uh, tried to reach 500 yard freestyle pace in practice. Very good. Very good. Process. Process. Processes don't scare us. Outcomes do. Okay? When we think about outcomes, am I going to win? Am I going to make the line up? What's my playing time going to be? All that sort of stuff, outcomes, that's what creates the fear in us. And you know, all of those things, you have no control. Whether you win or lose, you have zero control. You could be a golfer and shoot 65, 65, 65 in a tournament and still finish fifth. Does that mean you didn't perform well? Heck no. 
okay? You could be and swim great times. Maybe your best times as a breaststroke or as a butterfly, as a, as a freestyle. Your best times, but still finish 15th. Take ownership of the process, but we have to train our minds to do that. Our minds so automatically go, what's my grade going to be? What's my outcome going to be? All of these things, that's what creates fear in us. But if we can say no, it's going to happen. That's fine. It's going to happen. But if you can just kind of move it to the side, observe it, set it over here, I'm going to focus on my process. But you got to know your process for that day, for that practice. And if you keep doing that day after day after day after day after day, oh, you've just trained your mind to be f process focused. So when the game co rolls around, competition rolls around, what are you going to think about? Process. Okay, next slide. And uh, coaches, and, and you can pass this out. This is not, you know, I share this information with you, hoping you'll use it. I don't, you know, this stuff has been around for really, all this stuff I'm talking about has been around literally for thousands of years. We just say it differently, and it applies differently. First question you want to train yourself to do, what did I do well today? Because so many times athletes, here's a professional um, athlete, uh, professional on the PGA Tour. He used to call me. Every time, my putting sucks. Okay. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Okay. Next week, my putting sucks. All right. Went on for about four weeks. And I said, do you know why your putting sucks? Because that's what you keep saying to yourself. So it's not going to get any better. All right? So we got to do something different. I said, now, two weeks later, I said, you're going to do this for the next two weeks. These are your daily 15-minute drills. You do them, you call me in two weeks. I don't want to hear from you next week, basically. I said, you got to practice this. Um, he called me back in two weeks. I said, hey, what's going on? What do you think he said? What's that? Well, come on. I'm a great no, he said, my putting sucks. <laughs> okay, so what did I do? Exactly. I hung up the phone. Ten minutes later, he shoots me a text. Hey, I got a credit card charge for our session today. I'm like, yeah. What's the problem? I said, I had you booked for an hour, and I told you last time, next time I hear that, we're done. Everything switched around. It's amazing how money changes us. When you're on a mini tour, and all of a sudden, $200 is a lot of money. Okay? But he needed to learn that. Then he went on. He kept being more and more and more successful. But that was a real turning point because he realized this was what was holding him back. It's not his putting stroke. Okay. That's what I was just saying. Process, 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 process. Boom. So as coaches and as teammates, you kind of challenge each other. What's your process purpose today? What's your process purpose today? Write in your journal. That's all mental training. You're taking care of business. Watch what happens. Guarantee it. I've done this for a lot of years. I've got, you know, because of the work that the athlete does, get incredible results. All the way from Olympic golds to NFL championships to World Series to, you know, conference titles to all that sort of stuff. That's right in your grasp. If it's a national championship you want, you got to train all three legs of that stool, okay? All right, an anchor. What's an anchor do on a boat? Keeps it in place, right? How many times are you in practice or you're competing and your mind is all over the place? How many times is that happening for you? Frequently? Okay. You need to anchor yourself. You need to know ahead of time, what is my mental anchor? So when my mind starts to drift, and it will, i got to bring it back. These are just some of them. That's it. BLT. What's a BLT sandwich? All right. Here's your mental sandwich. Breathe. <sighs> Loosen your muscles. 
know your thought. It could be as simple as just be present. It could be as simple as here's my pro, get back to the process. You keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. You're training your mind. And that's right in practice. So you don't even need to do your 15 minutes when you get home because you're doing it right in practice. All right? Simple mental training. Simple, but if you don't do it, it's not going to change. Okay? Final slide here. Okay. Listen to a podcast. There are so many podcasts. There are so many TED Talks. There's so much out there for you guys. Listen. Listen to one. Ten minutes. That's mental training. Because you're putting in your mind something that you're not used to hearing. Okay? And it might ring for you. There's tons of that stuff out there. Tons of great stuff. That's mental training. Coaches, captains, all you have to say, hey, here's a podcast we're going to listen to as we start practice. Boom. Mental training. Okay? We don't just put it to a side and put all of our focus on skill and fitness. Because you, the mind dictates how well you're going to perform. Okay? All right. I think that was... Uh, all right. Are you doing what it takes, the subconscious? That's what you're trying to train here. So long term, you want to start today. Okay? You want to start today. I just gave you some simple little things that you can think about. There is so much more to it, but I wanted to expose you and at least let you guys know the importance of what your mind is exactly doing in your performances, academically and athletically. All right? And training your mind doesn't mean you have a problem. Training your mind means you want a better life. You want a better performance. That's what it means. Okay? Yes, we have roadblocks. You have stress. Some of you have uh, high levels of anxiety. Some of you may have depression. Some of you may have you know, difficult family environments going on right now. That's tough stuff. Okay? But I want you to challenge yourself to take a step towards it. Fear is natural. We all experience it. Taking a step towards it, that's courage. But we keep it simple. As, as you maybe have heard, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Get an inch better each day. Just an inch to see where you'll be in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one year. You'll be a completely different, much more resilient, mentally tough person for ready for life. Okay? All right. That's all I got. You guys are tired? Does anybody, just before you start moving, does anybody have any questions? Just, yes. So as a coach, when you, um, you know, you have those, those moments where you're getting down, you know, three, and you're just like, 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 you Here's another good thing for all of you. Set your alarm throughout your day, three times, various times, okay? And when that alarm goes off, all you need to do, this is mental training. Stop, say, do a body scan. What am I thinking? What's my body doing? 30 seconds, move on with your day. That builds awareness. So many times you're not aware of what's happening. You're not aware of how frustrated you are. You're not aware of that your mind is racing about outcomes and perfection. But if you stop, all of a sudden you say, okay, I'm aware of it. It'll come back, because that's what your brain does right now. That's what your mind does. It's used to it. You, you practice it very well. But if you just stop for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, say, okay, now move on with your day. That's it. Watch what happens within 30 days. If you commit to that three times a day, set your alarm various times. When it you know, vibrates, goes off, just say, just pay attention to what's my body doing, what's my mind doing. All right. You don't have to judge it, just observe it. That's it. Okay, any other questions? I'll stay after if you have any questions. There, my contact information is on there. You can ask uh, Mark, any of the, the, the staff. Feel free to shoot me any emails. I, I try to get to back. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you for your attention tonight.